Hey guys, today I want to share a bit of a gift guide for you. A gift guide for people who like to be cozy and like to be creative or like to be one or the other. Pretty much it's a list of things that I own and really like or things that I want. It would have been logical for me to post this a few days ago, but I get kind of annoyed at the influx of different things around Black Friday, so I specifically wanted to wait until after Black Friday to share this because there's just, there's so many extra videos and there's, even with newsletters, I normally send out a newsletter every Wednesday, either my homeschool one or my bookish one, and this week I just left it out. Last year I did send one, but I said like this newsletter can wait was my title because I just, I don't like all the noise that is online this week. So I intentionally waited till Saturday to share this video. But anyway, that's enough of a preamble. Let's get on to all the different cozy gift ideas. I have these separated into a few different sections. So we will dive in. And the first section I'm just calling cozy because it covers a lot of different things. I will do my best to link all of these things I talk about in the description. And I also have an Amazon, uh, like an American Amazon storefront that has a lot of this listed as well. So I'll leave that link below as well. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to mention, I should have bought stocks in this company like years ago because Jared gifted one to me and then I told my mom who told someone and I've told local friends who have bought this and I've told um, different online friends that have bought this and I, I could have, probably have a decent chunk of change if I had like bought stocks in this and that is a neck massager and I will give a fair warning the first time you use it make sure you only use it for 15 minutes or like a short time because you're gonna overdo it and it's gonna hurt a ton but learn from my mistakes and so this is great I suffer from tension headaches all the time like in my neck and in my like upper shoulders and this works wonders it helps to get rid of those knots or make them a little bit smaller and it has been a big game changer in my life. I also sometimes use it to like, if I have like a knot in my foot, I will put my foot on there or like on my legs if they're sore. This thing has been used so much. My mom, hers has actually worn through like the mesh on the top and she still uses it last I knew. Mine is still going strong. It hasn't broken at all, um, but I use it all the time. Actually, pretty much everyone in my house does. Jared like knocked the ball out of the park with that gift because I'd never heard of one this was years ago and I have used it so much. Let's go in that vein if you suffer from tension, headaches at all. Um, I will say a neck heating pad. I actually don't know, Jared bought one a while ago. I don't know what it's called, but I will leave it linked. It's his that he bought, covers your entire back. It kind of makes me feel a little bit like a soldier in an army from long ago. It covers your entire back, it comes up around your shoulders, and it also has like a band around your neck, and that's all heated. And it's really great if you use that before the massager because then it like loosens everything up, takes the headache down like a notch, and then you use the neck massager. They're great together. And then we will segue into more heated things, and I will say a heated blanket. If you live somewhere that is generally pretty cold, which I mean, I don't know what's happened to our November. It hasn't been very cold, but ever since I've had a heated blanket, it has changed winters for me because I used to suffer from not being able to ever warm up. You know, you go outside for a few minutes and then I was just chilled to the bone forever. And now if I sit with a heating, heated blanket for a little bit, I'm like totally good to go. And it is just a comfort thing. I actually have started to enjoy January because of that. So if you know someone that is always cold or if you are always cold, put it on your list. Okay, we're still in cozy, but this next bit here is a bit of a puzzle section. There are a few different puzzles. One, I was just looking at our friends own a game store and I was looking at it yesterday at their store. Someone had told me about it um, online a couple weeks ago and that is a Brambley Hedge puzzle. I love the Brambley Hedge picture book. We read it quite a bit in our homeschool. And my daughter has always loved, like you get a slice of in the tree, the mice in their house, and it looks really cool. The autumn puzzle, oddly, does not have 
a look inside of their house but the spring the summer and the winter all do i personally love the winter one um it looks great and then they have some literary puzzles um that i have found online i really like the bronte one the agatha christie one and the sherlock one and these particular puzzles all have little hidden things in them like little clues or hidden bits and pieces i don't i have never actually seen one of the puzzles up close so i don't know exactly what it is but i've had it on my wish list for a little while because i want to give one of these a try then one thing i got last year was a puzzle mat i think it was last year and i actually found out that i don't recommend a felt puzzle mat because when you're putting your puzzle together pieces of the felt get in there and you can't move your two pieces around because the felt is in there you need a i can't remember what it is called i think maybe they just call them rubber mat on amazon i'm actually using a game board i can't remember what kind of material it is that jared used to use he used it for playing card games but he hasn't been using it so i stole it and then i just uh, roll it up and some people have said that puzzle like stays bent and that hasn't been my experience um, I find they work quite well like maybe they're a little bent for like a few minutes when you first unroll it but it kind of all just straightens out so a puzzle mat is good if you want to take it up a notch which this might end up on my list next year I really don't want to put it on my list before we move because I think it would be a bit of a beast to move but that is a puzzle board and these often involve a tabletop type thing that can rotate with drawers underneath it sounds amazing looks like it would be really helpful and this will probably end up on my list for next year in the past few years i have developed a little bit of an obsession with mugs different kinds of mugs and i found a bunch of them on amazon that i like i really like the mugs that have a bit of a wider base that taper a little bit on the inside um, because i generally don't like huge mugs like i don't drink a ton at one time because i like my tea strong and i just have like a regular sized cup of hot cocoa when i have it but i am notoriously klutzy and so if it has a bigger base i'm less likely to tip it over there may have been an incident last night where i was walking very confidently in the dark and walked in into a door frame bent my glasses like my i'm surprised my eyes not black um my like eyebrow bone here is like super sensitive so i'm really klutzy so a mug that is not easy easily tipped over is something that i need i also saw um i like some of morgan harper nichols poetry um i like how she combines her art with her poetry her poetry is supposed to be like faith inspirational and i feel like it's a little bit more self-helpy than that but she has a few mugs um on amazon as well or a different company has made them for her or something and i like the look of them i like the colors because i really like her art style so there's a couple of those and then if you really want to take it up a notch if you have or you are a tea drinker or a coffee drinker that drinks multiple cups a day this is my best gift i've ever given jared a couple of years ago for his birthday i got him the ember mug and it is a heated mug so it is a temperature controlled mug you can set it to the temperature that you want and your drink will stay that temperature and he's a guy that drinks like three to cup three to five cups of tea a day and so he has gotten his use out of it i will say he has had trouble connecting the bluetooth like from his phone to his cup so he did get it originally set to the temperature that he wanted and but he often he like he can't really adjust it now because it doesn't always work but thankfully it is the temperature that he wants so i think we're good um and maybe it has been updated since the last time he tried the app or something but he i can pretty much say loves that mug because he uses it all the time and then i have thought about getting an ember mug or asking for one but as someone that drinks hot cocoa, first of all, I microwave my hot cocoa and you can't microwave the Ember mug. And also then I would have to like hand wash the mug every time because you have to hand wash the Ember mug. And Jared just rinses it out because he's just going to have a, another cup of Earl Grey tea later. Um, but obviously with hot cocoa, you need to rewash or wash it. And so another idea is a mug warmer. This is just a little 
disc that you can put your mug on and then it helps keep your drink at a bit of a warmer temperature. They're definitely not as good as the Amber mug because it's just heating the bottom but obviously it's also a lot cheaper and you can use any mug you want and you can put your mug in the dishwasher so that's an option if you like the idea of an ember mug but don't want to go quite to that level okay another idea i really like lamps and like cozy lighting and one thing my daughter put on her christmas list this year is a toast lamp um it's adorable she doesn't really want it for the light she just wants it for the looks and I totally agree with her. It looks adorable. Um, another cozy thing would be clothing and I am all for bookish shirts but if you're buying for someone else you could buy something in the vein that they like. Um, think about what they like, find a shirt on it uh, that relates to it. There are so many different options and this year I have not had my bookish shirt shop open and I want to change that for next year because I also really like designing shirts uh bookish and that kind of shirt so i will have some more of those at some point next year but there's so many online that a person can find and the last thing i have in the cozy section is a candle now i have opinions on like scents and things but i think everyone else has their own opinions i really like a cinnamon type of candle um i i also am curious about pumpkin spice i think i might like that um, but anything cinnamon based, I know a lot of people like the Woodwick candles. I have not had the greatest success with them myself. I think the Woodwick sound actually starts to bother me because I'm so sensitive to noise. I'm a like sensory sensitive person. Um, I don't really like the Woodwick myself, but I know lots of people do. The next section is my crafty section. When it comes to the time of the year where things start getting colder, my craftiness and my creativity just like skyrockets. I'm kind of useless from June to August, I've realized. And the rest of the year, my craftiness and creativeness is just so much higher. So I have a few things on here. I could go on for a long time in this section, but I'll try not to. Okay, the first thing I actually have on my wish list is a gold handled scissors. Um, I think the ones I have on my list are actually fabric scissors. I just need scissors in my office or like with my craft stuff other than my teeny little thread scissors that I have. Also, those are a good option if you have someone that likes to do anything with thread like embroidery or sewing or anything. They're cute too. Um, but I need a pair of bigger scissors down here, so the big ones are on my list. I'm also pro pocket notebooks. I often carry one around with me and write down all the random thoughts that come to my head and then sit on them and then realize a while later that some of those weren't as good as they, I originally thought, but then it turns out some of them actually are, so I like the mini notebooks. I often get them from like the dollar store, but I know you can get like a pack of a ton from Amazon as well and then you're like almost set for life. One thing I've wanted for years is a little thermo printer because I like to do a lot of art journal stuff. Um, these are often like I don't know maybe in the 30 to 40 dollar range and you can print you can do sticker paper or I think just like some kind of regular paper. They're just teeny little printers that come with an app that you need to use and you can print all sorts of things for like art journals or different things like that. If you want to take it up a notch, one thing that Reka has on her list this year is, I guess maybe this would be more in the techie section, which I'm going to do next, but oh well. Um, a, she has an Instax camera and she loves it, but do you ha there's also Instax printers, so you can print any picture from your phone onto the in Instax photo paper. So those are really cool too, but like more expensive. Okay, back to crafty. So a Cricut. I, back in the day, used to have a cameo silhouette. I used it all the time. And then for some reason I decided to sell it. I think because we were like fundraising for our adoption and I just ran out of things to sell. So I sold it and I regret it all the time. And the Cricut, I think it's the Cricut 3 Pro, I don't remember what it's called, Explore or something. I've had my eye on that one for a while. And so one of these days maybe I'll bite the bullet and buy it. But for now, I'm just going to keep looking at it. There are so many things you can make with crickets. Um, like, yeah, the ideas are endless and I think I would have so much fun with it. But 
right now I'm having a hard time justifying buying it, so I'm not going to yet. Okay, I also really like sending out postcards, hence why I make postcards for my one Patreon tier, because I know other people like sending and receiving postcards as well. And so you could buy a whole pack of postcards. I mean, Amazon has a bunch. There's some different bookstore ones. There is one particular bookstore one that I bought a while ago, and honestly, most of them were garbage, which is unfortunate. Like, they're just, they're just pictures, and it's like, ugh, like, most people could take a better picture than this. But I have found one pack that look better of bookstore postcards, and then they have postcards like, if there's something specific you or whoever you're buying for are interested in, there are tons out there. There's actually a really nice pack on the United States National Parks, and as someone that's not American, and I don't think I've ever been to any of the national parks, I can't really justify buying that pack, but I love the artwork on it. So if you are American and or like your national parks, check those ones out. One thing I like to do when I send letters to my pen pals and things is to use a wax seal. I don't use it all the time because it does involve pulling a bunch of stuff out and lighting a candle and that kind of thing, but a wax seal is a really good gift. They often, you can make, buy like a whole kit or you can just buy the seal plus some of the beads. I will say the wax beads I have found to be so much better than the sticks because the sticks as the wax is dripping, they actually harden before you can put the seal on um, or the stamp or whatever it is. So the wax, the long wax sticks that I have, I'm actually planning on chopping up and just using as beads. But yeah, there's so many different wax seals if there's something you're looking for. I have a cute mushroom one, a typewriter, typewriter one. They have like Hogwarts ones and like there's so many different things. Now, there's also tons of craft kits. If you want to buy for someone or even for yourself, if you want to try a different hobby or you want to gift a hobby to someone, but you know, they've never done it before or you're not sure if they're going to like it, there are tons of different hobby kits out there. Like you can get an embroidery kit, you can get a bonsai tree starter kit, you can get a soap carving kit, you can get a kit to make like book nooks for your bookshelf, you can get a candle kit or like a mini room kit. There, there's tons. I won't list them all here, but I feel like there's a hobby kit for pretty much everything. And the last one that I have in the crafting section is a collage book. I've seen these on Amazon and I've been so tempted to try them out. They are just books that have pictures on them that you can cut out and use in collage or in your art journal. I've actually, actually, actually even thought about making my own because that would be kind of fun too, but I really like the look of them and I think they could be so useful. Okay, I just have three ideas in the techie section. One is a cool keyboard. If you have someone that likes techie things but has all the things, this is something that I feel like you could get them and it's useful, um, but also looks cool. So there's there's a ton out there. You can get wireless ones, you can get wired ones. I kind of like either like the pastel -y kind or the ones that kind of look like a typewriter. I th I'm not sure necessarily how fun it would be to type on, but they look cool and isn't that really what matters? And then another thing that I think I'm not the only one that would like is over-the-ear headphones. I feel like so many people are going the in-ear route, which I can understand. But as someone that has tiny ears and the in-ear headphones really hurt my ears, and the one pair that I found actually worked has now died and I haven't had headphones for like six pl months plus, um, I'm going to go the over-the-ear headphone route and it's going to also block out a lot of the extra noise, which I think will be helpful. So I think that they're not just a thing of the past. I think people still use them. I don't really know if they do, but I'm going to. And then this is the most expensive item on this gift list, and that is a drone. And Jared actually told me last night that he bought me a gift, and he knows I don't like surprises, so he told me that he bought me a drone. So now I get to anticipate that arriving next week and prepare for lots of drone footage unless Saskatchewan is as Saskatchewan is. 
and it's windy all the time and I can't bring it out. Obviously this is not something that you just buy willy-nilly unless you're very rich and if you are we should be friends but I think it it's something that is so great because it, it's a way to be creative and it's, it's and I'm just trying to justify it to myself. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. That's really why. Two more sections left. This one is board games and I wanted to kind of list some of our favorite board games. I want to do a full video with our favorite family board games for the variety of different ages. Uh, I think the ones on my list right now are for like, I would say if you have kids who are eight plus, so uh, this isn't going to cover the entire age group, but these are the ones that we've been playing quite a bit lately. The first one is Wingspan, if you're into birds at all. Like I have been in the last, I don't know, maybe a couple of years. Wingspan is actually quite educational. Every card has facts about different birds. So we like that one. Seven Wonders Architects is one that we've been playing and I really enjoy that one because it's easy setup and it's actually a quick game. King Domino. Um, I'm not a very competitive person, which is maybe why I don't like board games as much as some other people uh, and why I often tend to lean towards cooperative games, although none of the ones on my list are cooperative. But King Domino is a game that my family almost never wins and I am almost always win. Uh, so I think I maybe like it for that, but it's also quick to play, quick to set up, like simple to learn. So it has lots of advantages and then me just winning all the games is just a bonus. If you want a game that you will probably laugh while you're playing, we really like Colt Express. Um, in this, you guys are all bandits, different bandits on a train trying to steal different gems and bags of money and stuff. And you play cards and certain ones are like pick up money, um, shoot someone, punch someone, etc. But everybody plays the cards and then you go through and you actually do the things. So you don't always know if like when you're shooting, if there's anyone there to shoot, or if you're punching, if you're in a train car by yourself or that kind of thing. And often we'll make like the kids like punch the air if there was no one around. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And if you have like any anger issues, then you can just take them out by fake shooting other people. So we play that one quite a bit. Um, one that we got fairly recently that I've played a few times is Clank. There are a couple of different variations of this one as well, and we've had a lot of fun with it. Um, I've played it with a friend, and I've also played a different version that we bought. And then when we were at the game store yesterday, I think it was, um, I saw a cute little game, which apparently is quite complex to play, but it's called Calico, and apparently you have to like build different quilts for cats to lie on, like so certain quilts will just draw them in. I don't know, but the art style was adorable and I find I'm very much drawn to different art styles. Like when I'm in the game store, the, it's like the cover of a book, right? Like I just gravitate towards certain ones and that one looked so cute. And my last section is stocking stuffers. I only have three on here, so I'll be quick. One that is actually on my wish list is a cute pill case. As someone that has like different medications that forget to take all the time. Actually, just reminded me I haven't taken mine at all today. Um, it's really good to have a bunch of these in my purse for when I do remember, or if I'm going to have like dairy and need a pill for that, um, or tension headaches like I talked about before. Uh, I tend to carry around like Advil for that and not my neck massager. I don't usually carry that in my purse. So I have a pill container, but it's ugly. And so I thought it'd be fun to have a cute one. Then I also have book tabs, book darts, whatever you want to call them. I go through them a lot and they're super small, easy to put in a stocking. So if you know anyone who likes to read or is in school, these are really helpful. And the last one is highlighters. And I specifically like, I think they're called the Stabilo. They have a pastel highlighter kit uh, set that I had in high school, I think, or maybe university. And I bought another pack a couple of years ago and they last for a really long time and I just love the muted colors. I don't like the neon highlighters. I like the pastel personally so maybe whoever you're buying for will like those as well. And that is officially my gift guide for 2023. I would love to hear like what kind of stuff you guys would add to this list if you have like similar ideas but different ones. Leave them below. Maybe they will help other people 
find things to buy for others or add to their list if they know that they have people buying for them that need ideas. So I always enjoy talking with you guys in the comments.